the Qatar Grand Prix was one of the wildest we've seen all season. There was a number of shocks, from Max Verstappen winning the title outside of an actual Grand Prix, to the FIA appearing to have a strong handle on track limits, with everything decided in very reasonable time. But perhaps the most shocking aspect of the race weekend was just how unsafe it was. The stories from the drivers are almost unbelievable, and today we'll fill you in on them all, so don't go anywhere. Max Verstappen's inevitable title win was a bit of an anti-climax in the end. Winning in the sprint race meant there was no podium celebration and champagne sprays to accompany his success. Instead, it was straight to the ice bath followed by a good night's sleep before the actual race the following day. A driver winning a world title after a sprint race could quite easily never happen again considering the lack of points on offer during them, but that doesn't make the fact that it happening sucked all of the fun out of the celebrations any better. It definitely won't have improved Max's opinion on sprint races, that's for sure. That wasn't the only thing that detracted from what should have been Red Bull's weekend. His teammate actually ended up being the bigger story, but you can check out our video from yesterday to hear about that. Another detractor was the risk to drivers' lives posed by the Qatar Grand Prix. Every time a driver steps into an F1 car, they're putting their lives at risk. Motorsport is, after all, inherently very dangerous, and no discipline is more so than Formula 1. But in Qatar, it wasn't the cars that were the risk, it was the race conditions. Appropriately considering the race was at night, this weekend was an absolute nightmare for the drivers. The humidity and temperatures, which were in excess of 40 degrees, and the high-speed corners made the race incredibly tough for the drivers. Another factor was the 18-lap limit on tires, which led to a minimum of three pit stops, so the drivers pushed harder during the Grand Prix, which was won by Max Verstappen on Sunday. The Pirelli tires just weren't up to the task at the LaSalle circuit and created an incredibly dangerous situation, but we'll talk about that later. I think Esteban Ocon's comments after the race summed it up best. I was throwing up by lap 15-16, for two laps I think, he said after finishing 7th at Alpine. I was doing that and thinking, shh, it's going to be a long one. Get it under control just mentally and just focus on what I've got to try and do. I've never had that in the past. I've always been able to do two race distances in the car. That's what I've always been training for. But today, it was just the hot air and how hot the engine is from behind the car. I don't think we particularly sealed the cockpit too well. It must have been like 80 degrees inside the car. I'm glad that next year, we come back here in December. Drivers in every car were struggling. Mercedes' George Russell was seen at one point driving down the pit straight with his visor up and his hands out of the cockpit, trying to direct air onto his face. In the cool-down room, Oscar Piastri just laid on the floor and Max sat in a corner, the exhaustion making the trip to the high seats for the Max Verstappen podcast as it has now become known impossible. Logan Sargent was one of several drivers in Qatar to suffer from dehydration and stated he felt sick on the radio during the race. Sargent, who is the only driver on the grid without a contract for next year, initially pushed on before retiring with 16 laps to go. He was seen being lifted out of his car by the medical staff in his garage. Following Logan's retirement from the Grand Prix, he's been assessed and cleared by the medical team on site after suffering from intense dehydration during the race, weakened by having flu-like symptoms earlier in the week, said Williams. Alex Albon was also taken to the medical center and didn't attend the post-race media activities, while Lance Stroll nearly fainted when getting out of his Aston Martin following the race. Stroll said everything was blurry for the last 25 to 30 laps, and he was basically passing out during the higher speed corners. Watching Lance Stroll getting out of his car and stumbling towards the ambulance after the race, I completely believe him. Bottas called it dangerous, and Norris said the race reached the limit of what the drivers are capable of withstanding. Temperatures over the weekend were 5 to 10 degrees higher than the seasonal average. If they'd been closer to expected, then perhaps the racing would have been more bearable. If the tires hadn't been disintegrating, forcing the FIA to impose a maximum stint length, encouraging the drivers to push far harder than they normally would, then maybe it would have been all right. But when these two factors combined, it created a perfect storm of hell for the drivers. The heat was so extreme that Fernando Alonso was asking for water to be poured over him at a pit stop to try and cool his seat down as it was burning his backside. Does the FIA need to do something then? Well, probably not. Like I said, this was the perfect storm of conditions, and the race is already far later in the year next season. Nonetheless, this is a race that none of the drivers will forget anytime soon. Apart from maybe Lewis Hamilton, who will be hoping to forget it as quickly as possible. 
He and Carla Sainz were the lucky ones who got to spend the race in the garage, though Hamilton had to do so for all the wrong reasons. Hamilton, who started third on the grid, attempted to drive round the outside of Russell, who started second, and pulse it to Verstappen in a gung-ho bid for glory. But Hamilton tagged the front left of Russell's machine, and out of control Hamilton was sent into the gravel, with the right rear wheel of his Mercedes flying off into the air. Russell was sent spinning round before limping back to the pits for a new front wing. Out came the safety car, and the inquest started. Effing hell, yelled Russell. Come on, what the hell, I've got damage. It was a dangerous move by Hamilton, but what followed was far more dangerous from the seven-time world champion. After crashing out of the race in lap one, the driver of car 44 abandoned his car in the gravel and ran back to the pits. He thereby crossed the track that was live at this time and reached the inside edge of the track just seconds before car 63 arrived at high speed after exiting the pits. He then continued to walk alongside the track until finally exiting the track, the stewards noted. Walking onto an active F1 track is one of the most stupid things you can do during an F1 race, and Hamilton rightly received a non-driving reprimand and a €50,000 fine, €25,000 of which is suspended for the remainder of the 2023 season, providing there's no further breach of similar nature. After the race, Hamilton explained why he tried so hard to pull off a move that was barely on. Before the race, we knew we were on different tires, so we wanted to work together. I had the soft tire and everyone around me was on the medium, and I needed to get by. I tried going around the outside of Max, and it just didn't work out. The soft tire was in theory faster than the medium, though George Russell showed that wasn't the case in his final stint when he was unable to close the gap to Lando Norris for third place, who was on the mediums. The tires were a huge problem all weekend, actually, creating a massive issue for the FIA and seriously endangering the drivers. After FP1 on Friday, Pirelli followed standard procedure by analyzing the tires and identified a microscopic separation in the sidewall between the topping compound and the carcass cords. This was caused by drivers running over the new for 2023 pyramid curbs at the LaSalle circuit, which features a 50mm border that was causing significant impacts as the tires drop over the edge. Further analysis followed the 19-lap Saturday sprint race to assess if the FIA should mandate three-stop strategies for teams in the GP. During a Sunday afternoon meeting of F1 team managers before the race, the FIA revealed the outcome of Pirelli's overnight investigation, imposing a maximum stint length of 18 laps for new tires. The punishment for breaking that 18-lap limit? An instant black flag and disqualification. That's how dangerous it was to run the tires any longer. The FIA was seriously worried about tire blowouts. On a weekend that the BBC reported that Pirelli would be receiving a contract extension to continue supplying F1 tyres until at least the 2027 season, it was an awful show from the sport's sole supplier. Luckily, none of the tyres gave out over the weekend, and in the end, the 18-lap limit made a great spectacle, though the drivers definitely didn't enjoy it. Remember Baku 2021, when Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll both had tyre blowouts? They were horrifying crashes that could easily have been repeated in Qatar. Despite the incredible dangers of the weekend, every driver made it through mostly healthy, and we're thankful for that. But what was the most insane part of the weekend for you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, give this video a like to help us out. Until next time, drive safe and bye for now.